empowerment. So a very good afternoon to all our highly regarded guests, to our venerated principal ma'am, Professor Suman Gupta, and to our esteemed guest from overseas, uh, Dr. Geeta Upadhyay, who has joined our meet all the way from Georgetown, USA. Today's webinar has been organized under the ages of Mission Shakti program. Mission Shakti is the UP government's flagship program aimed at promoting the security, dignity, and empowerment of women. The first phase was launched in October last year. This is the third phase that started on 21st August, 2021. Before we proceed with the online talk, I would like to invite our principal ma'am, Professor Suman Gupta, to welcome our keynote speaker and address our audience. Over to you, ma'am. Hello. Thank you, Sweta. Aaj mera maha vidyale. Is webinar ke madhyam se misan sakti ke third phase ka jo tisra charan hai, uska surwaat kar rahe hai. Aur mukhi vakta ke roop mein, aaj hamare maha vidyale ne, Dr. Geeta Upadhyay, Associate Professor, Pathology Vibhag, Uniform Services University. I thank them with a great heart from their heart. और इसी क्रम में मैं मैडम को ये आज मैडम के जो वक्तव्य होंगे ये महिला सशक्तिकरण का एक पर्याय है कि वो भारत की होते हुए उनको लखनऊ के पीजीआई से उनको भेजा गया है एक विशेष कार्य करने के लिए विदेश में और वहाँ से वो हमारे बच्चों का हमारी नारी शक्ति का उत्साह वर्धन कर रही हैं इस उनकी पहचान की � नहीं है कराने की क्योंकि स्वयं वह एक पहचान है और भारत को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही हैं यूएसए में मैडम आज आप जो बताएंगी गीता उपाध्याय जी कि कैसे नारी जो है नारी को सशक्त करने की आवश्यकता नहीं है सिर्फ उसे उसकी शक्ति को बताने की आवश्यकता है कि हम एक नारी शक्ति हैं और हमारे अंदर आपार ताकत है और उस ताकत को हमें भरपूर प्रयोग करना है जहाँ पर भी रहते हैं हम चाहे वो घर हो चाहे वो ऑफिस हो हम अपनी पूर्ण क्षमता के अनुसार कार्य करते हैं तो इसको सिर्फ और सिर्फ जगाने की आवश्यकता है जो हमारे इस माध्यम से मंच आभासी मंच के माध्यम से जुड़े हुए हैं अन्य कॉलेज के प्राध्यापक गण प्राचार्य गण और हमारे प्यारे छात्र छात्राएं मैं सभी का हृदय से स्वागत करती हूँ अभिनंदन करती हूँ मैं ज्यादा समय नहीं लूंगी और स्वेता जी आप गीता उपाध्याय मैडम को इनवाइट करिए उनका लेक्चर सुनने को हमारे जो बच्चे हैं वो इगर हैं थैंक यू स्वेता हेलो 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 यस मैम आई एम ऑडिबल मैम या आई कैन हियर यू नाउ नो Hello. Hi. You're breaking up, but I can see you. Introduction of guest speaker, Dr. Gita Padhyay to everyone. So I wish to thank Dr. for accepting our invitation. So Dr. Dr. Geeta Upadhyay is an associate professor in the Department of Pathology and in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology at the Uniformed Services University of the Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland. Her research interest is to develop targeted therapies and understand the mechanistic basis of these therapies in solid cancers, such as triple negative breast cancer. Dr. Upadhyay has received award-winning PhD degree in 2000.
डॉक्टर गुप्ता फॉर नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड डॉक्टर मिश्रा फॉर the initiation and the invitation and i'm very happy to be talking to you guys here it's a uh, very early morning in washington dc and i couldn't be more excited from talking to you guys and can i share my screen now yes uh, ajit ji please uh, allow uh, screen sharing please मैं मिला हुआ है थैंक यू अच्छा डॉक्टर गीता प्लीज चेक ही हैज अलाउड यू टू शेयर योर स्क्रीन ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो अम सो एज अ so sorry to was saying um that i am a associate professor at uniformed services university in bethesda maryland and um, i'm excited to be together with you guys today your um, bishley parsi pg college which is in ashiana which is not very far from my home in rajajipuram lucknow so really excited to be here so first i have to show you this disclaimer which is required from my work so all the opinions presented here are of my own and doesn't represent the views of my employers which is the department of defense and the national cancer institute um so i'm going to give my talk and show you bunch of pictures these pictures i took from my recent trip in germany so um you will get to see some of the beautiful scenery from germany as well um so here is a little background of myself uh, i was born in lucknow uttar pradesh and uh, i went to you lucknow university where i did my masters in organic chemistry then i did a phd in uh, sanjay gandhi um pgi lucknow and during my phd i went to germany and i studied there as well for my phd then i came to us and i did my post doc at university of texas health science center of san antonio um i worked at national cancer institute in bethesda and then i did my final post doc for training at harvard medical school in boston and afterwards i became a faculty in georgetown university washington dc and more recently at the uniform services university in bethesda maryland so i'm really excited to share uh, some of the things which i have experienced and learned throughout my journey um and uh, so i i will be mostly speaking in english because um it's just easier but i would try to switch back to hindi a little bit in in between so success safalta why do we need it 
Um, who will benefit for it? Why would anybody want you to be successful? And this first slide is going to cover that. So we need safalta, we need success, so that we could be productive members of society. We can contribute to our communities so that we can pass on what we have learned successfully to the next generation. And this passing on to next generation, you could never do it too early. If you're a student, if you're going, um, if you're in graduate school, you can always teach the people who are younger than you. So it's, it's when we talk about next generation, it's not something for just older people to do. It's for all ages to do. Then why do we need to succeed? Why people need for women to succeed? Why should I be succeeding? Is because we are, women are the biggest stakeholders. Um, maybe I shouldn't say biggest, but maybe as much as men are uh, stakeholders. What does a stakeholder mean, um, mean in this context? I think the stakeholder is like you have something in it for you. So why should a woman in the family has to have success in the means, in the traditional means is just simple act of earning your living. And why should, why is it important for everyone else? What's in it for everyone else? And this is when everyone else understands it, that there is something in it for them, that you succeed, they will help you. And believe me, when people help you, you succeed. And so by making these other people a stakeholder in your success, you will recruit collaborators. You will also recruit mentors. And um, then you will, it, it will be so much easier for you to succeed when you have, when you have identified who are your stakeholders and who are your collaborators, who can be your mentors. And when people are your collaborators and when people are your mentors, they're not just doing this as a favor to you, but you have to see what's in it for them. And, and that is a very important thing to ultimately become uh, successful in the traditional terms. So to be successful, what I have learned is that you have to have a network, a network of family members, friends, mentors, even your students. Um, and the truth of the matter is that we live in a reference-based society. It's important what your students say about you. It's important what your mentors say about you. It's important what your friends say about you. It's important what your family says about you or thinks about you. Uh, not even say about you, but sometimes can think what you can do. Um, in the reference-based society, for example, if you a job, then you have to ask yourself, where did you work first? You have a reference. If you are a teacher, then you have to ask yourself, what do you think about your student's reference? What do you think about your student's So in the reference-based society, we are very concerned about our image, our reputation, and sometimes that can hold you back because then you're afraid of doing things. Oh, I, I'm going to do this. But what if my professors don't like it? What if my family doesn't like it? What if I want to teach this new thing? But what if my students don't like it? So, so how to balance that ability to take new steps, which are probably risky, but very, very important to be able to do something new. Um, so that balance you will seek. And people who will find that balance, they will be more successful than others. So always keep thinking about the pros and the cons of your actions in your network. That is the key. 
pros and cons of your actions in your network, what is going to happen to them? Because every action you will take, there will be consequences of that. But I'm not, what I'm trying to say is that don't be afraid of the consequences, but be aware of that. And, um, and then take the risk. So how to get ready? How to get, this is my daughter. Um, she's trying to get ready for a, for a play date here. So, and this is what I think when I am going to do something new in my life, how to get ready for this? What would I need? So yes, you will need your water bottle. You will need your backpack. You will need your, a toy to keep you busy. And uh, then you have to see what else do you need. So prepare yourself for the journey ahead. So for example, if you're going to do a job search, if you're gonna do a new, new job, you have to have a lot of time on it. Oh, my daughter, I woke her up. Okay, so, so here is an example right in front of you, right? I'm talking to you and my daughter woke up and, and my husband is now going to take care of her. So you need that kind of support system for being able to do what, what you are going to do. And this is what I'm talking about. That's why the network becomes so important. That's why the family becomes so important. And then, and then my daughter and my husband, they are stakeholders in my success. And, and, and this is what you have to see surrounding you that how you make them a stakeholder in your success. And then they will have people that nobody's gonna come yell at me, oh, what are you doing? Because they know it's important to me. They have understood it because we have talked about it. And, um, and this is the more we can get this in our families, the more women will be successful. So then uh, the next thing is that, okay, you've decided you're going to be successful. You're going to do something. Uh, what do you do next? How do you set your goals? So for me personally, think big. Think big, bigger than you think you can accomplish. I have said this, I think sometime before, is that make yourself a goal which you think is attain unattainable, that you cannot attain it. And then, then make a to-do list, what do you need to get there? And so when I was um, in India, when I was doing my PhD, we didn't have relatives in US. We didn't know anyone. In fact, literally, we did not know anyone. But I was thinking, what do I want to do? I want to do a PhD. I want to do research, but where do I do this research? And then I'm like, yeah, there is this place in, in US called Harvard Medical University. I've heard they do pretty good things, but we have no idea how to get there. We don't know anyone, but, uh, but then you, you see how other people have done it, even if you don't know them and you talk to them. And then you set your path and probably you will get there or probably you won't. It, it doesn't really matter because the road is um, also fun. You have to make sure that you make the road fun, or your journey fun. Then the next thing is that if you want to be someone, if you, if you have a dream of doing something, you got to vision yourself to be, to be that person in your mind. Don't be afraid of trying new things. Try different hats. Yeah, and uh, because you have to see yourself be before you could. Here in US, they say fake it until you make it. That doesn't mean fake it as to deceive other people, but imagine yourself being that person which you want to be in your mind. You can play it, you can, you can have fun with it. And uh, once you do that, you will see that that taking efforts, taking pains to get there will become easier. Actually, it will become fun. So then you have to also be um, aware that there are limitations and the limitations will come, come to you in the times when you least want them. You know, you would be thinking, I, I wanna do this. I have done all my research. I know how to do this and, and everything is set for me. And actually everything was set for you. But when you get there, you're like, wow. 
suddenly there are things which you didn't think that you will encounter. You know, you might, and in this encounter is different for everyone. It's very personal. Um, you could be a person from an underprivileged background. You could be, uh, say, for example, a uh, scheduled caste in India. You were going to be a boss of a company somewhere, but and you will meet all the people who are like from this other hair cast and whatnot, and they will embrace you. And you will be like, whoa, amazing, you know, you can do anything you want. But then you could be someone else and you would just by chance, you will meet this one person who didn't think your way and, and but they have the power to stop you. So what I'm trying to get to you is that, that the, the residual discrimination of any sort, it could be against anything. It could be against pregnant women. It could be against, you, you look a certain way, you talk even a certain way, you dress a certain way. It could be of any kind. And it's, it's very, very privileged. And this is what I call and take it as an individual limitation, which uh, is very hard to fight because you cannot generalize it so, for example, in the U.S., there is a lot of talk about race right now and, and how, to, how to come to the grip with. So, for example, if someone is a um, person of a dark skin color in the U.S., you know, they, they can be thinking, oh, I shouldn't even be try to accomplish this great thing because I'm not going to get this. They cannot be thinking that way. Um, they have to try that. So, and also for women, I think it it is true here as much as it's true in India is that there are certain limitations which are just thrown at them in the most unfavorable ways. But if you just get bitter about it, it's not gonna get anywhere. And this is why the beginning of my talk, I talked about collaboration, stakeholder, make your family your collaborators. Um, because you can succeed without having people on your side, you can, it's not impossible, but you cannot be happy without people having on your side. And you wanna be both, you wanna succeed, and you wanna be happy because that's your right to be happy, in my opinion. So, um, so I, I haven't really figured it, this whole thing out, that how to take these limitations which exist in our world, in our construct, the construct we live in, and how we take ourselves out and live with it and succeed with it. So this is something very personal which everyone will experience some way or another. Men will experience it as age discrimination, you know, as you name it, anything, everyone will experience this. And um, this is where our friends, family and network will help us to, to overcome this. And that's why we need communication is another thing that comes very much in play. If you feel like, oh, I feel like that I'm, someone's gonna be prejudiced against me. Talk to your boss, talk to your mentor, talk to your friend. Hey, I'm not sure, and you can bring it up. Like, hey, I'm not sure whether I can actually, I'm right or not, but it's my gut feeling that I feel like that this might happen. And what do you think I should be doing to avoid that? You can do it that way. Don't be afraid that if you say something in an unflattering light, that might always play against you. It might not. It might. It's a risk. You have to take it. <laughs> um, trying to be successful, trying to do more than one thing takes a lot of you. It takes you away from your family. It can take you from your social life, from your friends, and which can have a negative impact on your work and vice versa. So why I put this family social life and work in one slide is because you need a balance between these three 
when all these three, three things are going well for you, you will be at your best. You have a good family life. You have good friends. Everything is going well at work. <laughs> Never happens at the same time. All these three, three things, but you need that. And um, so self-care is very important. You can find self-care, I don't know, trying to get to um, getting a couple hours out of your work and actually going, be in nature. Um, try to do gardening with your family. Try to cook a new dish you found on YouTube. So whatever form of self-care, make a cake for your family for no reason um, is, is good, is good. So self-care is very, very important. Then there will be times when things will not work out. Um, you will have to regroup. You will have to give yourself time to heal. You have to gather your resources before you get back in the game. And um, if any failing, take it as like as a stop, as a brief, brief stop into any, um, just take that time. You're like, it's okay, you know. Um, when I was in India, my father used to say, Girte hai she saware hi maidani jang mein ghutno ke bal chalne wale kya khaan ke ra karte hai. So you have to just always remember that, that this was going to happen. I knew this would happen. And this will happen and this has happened. And what do we do next? Get back in the game. Take your time. Um, so again, um, say if you wanted to be something in your life and that doesn't happen, um, then you have to tell you this is not the end of it. And, and the goals are not set in stone. The goals will change with you because the goals are a life thing. They evolve as you evolve. Maybe what you thought was important for you 10 years ago, maybe it's not important anymore. And, um, and that's okay. That definitely is okay to maybe when you were uh, mm, a little girl or a boy, you thought you would be an astronaut. Now you are 20 year old and you don't want to be an astronaut. And now you want to be, um, I don't know, a doctor, a gardener, whatever. So when your goals change, accept them because goals are living things as you. Goals are made for you. You are not made for your goals. Always remember that. Um, that's really, really important, I think, to, to be happy. So again, do not forget to enjoy your ride until you get what you want in it because um, you will spend most of your time into trying to do something, not actually um, just get there. So I think these were the some thoughts which I'm, I am happy to share with you. And now I can take uh, questions or we can do a longer discussion because if, if I just keep on the monologue, <laughs> I don't uh, uh, think that would be very productive. Then I rather, I rather want to take this opportunity to talk to you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gita. It was indeed an enlightening address. I really, you laid down simple interactions in life that are necessary to achieve one's goals in life. And I'm sure the participants and the students, they are quite, they are also quite enriched by this address of yours. And before we proceed further, I would like to request anyone who has any query, Dr. Geeta would be more than happy to uh, answer your queries. Is there anyone who has any question for her? Yes, ma'am. Ma Good afternoon. Ma I am Shiva Varma and I would like to ask that what difficulties need to balance the personal and the professional life for you as a woman, especially a doctor? Uh, can you say this again? Uh, please repeat it. Now basically, the question that what if it... Sure, ma'am.
Um, Ma'am, he is asking, how do you balance your professional and personal life, especially being yeah, a doctor? Yeah, yeah, right. Thank you, thank you. So, how do I balance it? Uh, first of all, you, you you can't really balance it every day. So one day it's uh, work, second day it will be not so much work. And um, to be honest, the days it's not so much work, you, you feel bad about work. Then the day you don't spend time with your family, you feel bad about that. Having said that, these are just true human emotions and you just accept it, you know? You're like, oh, I miss my daughter, but you know, I gotta do this. So, and then when with your daughter, oh, I could have done that. But so this is just like a constant uh, struggle, but always I try to remember to make it up for. Um, so if I have to spend one day more at my work in the weekends, then I will try to take an hour or two off to spend the time with my family another day. So always make it up, always make a promise to yourself to make it up to them. Yeah, ma'am. It's all about time management. Yes. Is there anyone else who would like to ask any question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, a very good afternoon, ma'am. My, my, I am Ankit Kumar, and I would like to ask a question. My question is, what are the challenges you faced as a woman when you settled in USA? Thank you, ma'am. Right. I, so first of all, I was very disillusioned that if I go to US, I'm not going to have any discrimination because we only did that in India, which is so not true. We have the same set of challenges to women and men in US, what we have in India. So since we never received any formal training as to how to encounter that, I had to just deal with it as it came. So the first thing is that what you have to let people know as a woman that what you want to accomplish, always talk about your goals. So then people know they don't just see you as your face, but they are talking to and they know what you want. And once people knew what I want, it became easier. Does that make sense that talk about it, what you wanna do? even if you are a woman. And because most people, when you see as a woman, if I'm just talking about stereotyping, then they don't know whether you wanna be a professor or run your own lab. This was a very big deal. Everybody was like, do you wanna run your own lab? Do you know what it takes to run your own lab? Or rather you and me is tough. So we had to make it from day one very clear that we, I wanna run my own lab. It was very important to me that I want to run my own lab. Having said that, you know, this doesn't have to be goal for everyone. And they, they might want to do something else. But I had to communicate very clearly um, when my male colleagues maybe didn't have to communicate it very clearly that I do want to be in the leadership position. And that I thought was very hard to do because it's not humble to do that, that you go out there and say that. Because in India, my parents always taught me, Apne se kare badai, so, bade log bhi ho so you, you, we never wanted to do that. But at some point, you have to do that. You have to go and tell out and that what you want to do. And I thought that was very challenging to me to learn that part of, of the game. Yes, ma'am. Proper communication is definitely the key to most of our problems. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask any questions? Yes, ma'am, I would like to ask a question. I'm Vipul Mahin Shirvastav, and I would like to ask that what advice would you at, at, offer to young women who have just started their work? Yeah, I would say young women who have just started their careers, set goals for you, and uh, don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid of being alone. Don't be afraid of being unsuccessful um, and just go for it. Seriously, just go for it. And uh, if you will, uh, and when you will just go for it, you will see that um, other people will come and help you. But set your goals, don't be afraid, set bigger goals than you will have actually, a sane person would have set it. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to ask any other question? So I think that was all in this interactive session. Thank you, Dr. Geeta. Over to, do, yeah. over to you, Mr. Abhishek. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Bhardwaj, and I'm here to present the vote of thanks for today's web webinar. I would like to thank our webinar guest, Dr. Geeta Upadhyay, for enlightening us with the knowledge and experience. Today's webinar gave us insights about the topic of women empowerment. The presentation empirically explained how to get empowered. I felt that it was almost a step-by-step -step guide to empower women. And when she discussed the different facets through which you can achieve that thing, like the success, she discussed about the network building and how to get ready and to be aware of the pitfalls and the support system you have to create during your entire journey so that you can have their support when you face different issues. And the fact that you should give time to yourself for self-healing, that the problems would come to you and then you, are, you have to eventually face them and move past beyond them. So what is interesting is whenever we think about a seminar or a webinar on women empowerment, what comes to our mind is that the seminar would talk about social, political or economic empowerment. But I think what is special about this webinar, uh, webinar was that it gives up this usual additive approach where we think that women empowerment only entails social, economic and political empowerment. But I think what ma'am emphasized was that you have to first be empowered as a person, as a woman, if you are empowered, then all these social, economic and political factors would eventually fall into place and they'll start working for you. So I really like this thing where she stressed on the fact that you should be empowered first and then all these factors would eventually work in your favor. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Geeta Upadhyay for taking out time from a busy schedule and sharing her knowledge and experiences. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. I would... Yeah, you said it better than I could have said it. This is what no, I mean to say. No, ma'am. Ma actually, you were... Brilliant, ma'am. Like, I got to learn so many things from this seminar. And it was so different from the normative things. So I really like that thing. And continuing, I would also like to thank our principal, ma'am, Dr. Suman Gupta, for giving permission to organize this webinar session. Lastly, I would like to thank the teachers and students for attending the webinar and making the event successful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. You are all of you. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye.